There is no doubt that climate change is impacting the Huron River already, and the Huron River Watershed Council wants to be proactive to prepare this river for a new climate future. In southeast Michigan, we're seeing our air temperatures increase, and we're seeing changes in precipitation patterns. When our air temperatures increase, the water temperature increases, and those changes in rainfall patterns lead to changes in flow patterns, and both of those have implications for the wildlife in the river. We've been able to implement three different strategies. We've been protecting the forests alongside the river, restoring habitat within the stream where we have very little, and we've been working with dam operators to improve flow management in the Huron. This is what I would characterize as a healthy river. You've got the trees, you've got the brush, you can see areas of shade. I've always thought that this is just a great spot here. A lot of people don't believe that climate change really exists, but I, I think that's blind. We have to be cognizant when we're looking at plans for uh, developments. One of the things that I'm most proud of is our tributary overlay district. We took the same standards that you have in a natural river district and applied that to all of the tributaries that feed water into the Huron River. The ultimate result is less water runoff. Less water runoff is less erosion. Cooler temperatures in the river, because that's ultimately what we're looking to do, is to cool down the rivers, keep them cool, and not let them warm up. It's a premise shared by my township board that the river is only as good as the water you're putting into it. Six months ago we brought about 20 trees down in this section so that they would remain as fish habitat. Fish need diverse water flow. The problem we have in Ypsilanti is that there's not much natural flow variation. It's about the same depth, it's about the same velocity all the way across. When we put in these trees, we are increasing that flow diversity. We're getting faster water coming around the edge. That can cause some scour, which means we're, we're washing away sand and muck, exposing the substrate that these fish want to form their spawning beds in. On the downstream side of the trees we have these nice slow water zones. These are places that fish like to hide where they can be safe. Patterns in flow provide cues to wildlife in the river that are very important to their success. So for example, our smallmouth bass spawn in the spring. If they experience large changes in flow very rapidly year after year, then the populations of those bass uh, will decline. So in the Huron River, we have this very unique situation. Our dam operators are networked. They meet twice a year uh, to talk about issues related to flow and dam operations. Dam operators can change the way they manage flow just a little bit in ways that can benefit the ecosystem. This means that we can attempt to do things like keep a minimum amount of water in the channel during dry periods. It means that we may be able to use dams to dampen those spikes that happen when extreme rain events hit. In initial meetings with the dam network, what we heard from them was that we don't know explicitly how flow changes in response to our changes at the dam. And so we partnered up with the University of Michigan to pilot these flow monitors at certain spots on the river. What's beneficial about these flow monitors is that they transmit flow data in real time. So we know almost immediately when we make changes at the dam 
what impacts that has on flow below the dam. A healthy functioning river protects us from flooding. It continues to provide high quality drinking water and all the recreational and beauty benefits that we've come to love about the Huron. The Huron River Watershed Council has been protecting the river for 50 years. Climate change is bringing a whole new set of challenges, but we can do things now that will ensure a healthy functioning river system long into the future.